spring has officially sprung where I live, and that means flowers are blooming, the birds are singing, it's sunny, it's warm-ish, it's sometimes not raining on the Oregon coast. <sighs> I know what that means. I'm super inspired to paint. Hey everybody, welcome back into my studio, and today's video is going to be a paint with me video where I'm creating a piece in real time and I invite you to sit down in my studio with me, grab a cup of coffee, tea, grab your art supplies, paint with me, sketch with me, whatever, while you're getting your coffee or your tea and grabbing your art supplies and hitting the like button. I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. Have you guys noticed that a lot of art YouTubers are being sponsored by Skillshare? I mean, think about it. This big art company is partnering with a ton of different art creators, different types of channels, different sizes of channels, and I think that is fabulous, and for that alone, bravo Skillshare, bravo. On the slight chance that you have not heard about Skillshare, let me share a little bit about them with you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes, ranging from all different types of topics, and I mean all sorts of topics if you're thinking, yeah, it's another art channel. No, it's so much more than just art. And these classes are taught by people who are experts in their field, which is going to help you improve your skills, open up new opportunities, and help you to do work that you love to do. Did you know there's even classes on how to be a better YouTuber on Skillshare? If you've ever looked at how much it costs to take a class at a college or a trade school, it can get pretty expensive. A premium membership at Skillshare will give you unlimited access to all of their classes. Their annual membership works out to be a little under $10 a month. That's less than like two fancy coffees. And right now, if you look in the description box below, I'm putting in a link where you can get your first two months of Skillshare for free. Right now, some of the videos that have been perking my interest are painting flowers. I went to a wildflower show, and yes, that's a real thing, where all these flowers and plants that I've always seen before as weeds were now presented in this beautiful, beautiful fashion. And they're gorgeous. They even made dandelions look so cool. So I have a new appreciation, newfound love for flowers, specifically wildflowers. Now there's several out there that I have seen in the past, like, like these are forget-me-nots. I'm actually growing these right now. They have not spread. I'm growing these and some marigolds. My marigolds have popped up. These ones are called popcorn flowers and they look exactly like forget-me-nots, except they're completely white. So if you learn how to draw this kind of a flower, you get two in one. You just, with one of them, you paint it blue, and the other one, you just leave it white. Uh, but I thought we would tackle the white one in this sketch, just because I've had a lot of people asking, how do you color something that's white? So we'll figure that out. Now one trick in sketching something that is white is to use a very light colored pencil or something that you can erase because you don't want this really dark outline. So I'm actually going to use a green color pencil. This is a Pilot Color Enos. These are some of my favorite color pencils to work with mechanical color pencils. And they come in a pack with a whole bunch of different colors. I'll leave a link to where I buy them in the description box below. If you're interested, you can check them out. But this one's a really light pale color. Hopefully <laughs> you'll be able to see it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in even closer on my paper and I'm going to just sketch in the overall shape. So I'm going to first sketch the overall shape of the whole flower right here. And again, I'm going really lightly so that it won't show up as much in my actual drawing. This is the entire flower. It's, you know, a circle shape. And then in the center, I'm going to go ahead and find my center of the flower. Now, depending on how the flower is looking, it might not be exactly centered. Like if you look at this flower over here, the center is really close to the edge. And then on this flower, it's it's relatively in the middle. It just depends on what angle it's, it, it's at. It's one of the reasons it's so helpful to have a reference photo to look at. To make this easier for you, if you guys would like, I will leave a link um, to these reference photos. I'll put them up on my website so you can jump over there and look at those photos for yourself up close. So I'm going to do this flower that, uh, right here and I'm going to put my center and then I'm just going to block out the petals because there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five petals here. So I want to block out those petals. So one, two, three, four, five. And doing it this way first, that way you don't have like 
you know, four normal sized leaves and one gigantic leaf because they weren't measured right, or, you know, a tiny little leaf trying to fit that one in there. You can kind of just block those out. But the nice thing is if you really look closely to the center, it's not a complete circle. It's actually this, I don't know, is that a pentagon? That's the five sides. I think that's a pentagon. It's a little shape right there. And then inside of that is a circle, so we can kind of get that, that little shape. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and bring the leaves up. So they come up about halfway and then they start to curve in, but not just a, like a complete nice little circle. There's kind of like, they have little, little bits and bobs. However, some are a little bit smoother, some have a little bit of a jag to it. Some of them are kind of folded over. They're individuals. So for Gemminas would be a really fun flower if you're wanting to do a card for someone like a Mother's Day card, um, but you don't want to do like the traditional roses. Um, these are great little flowers, really pretty easy to draw because they're just that basic shape. And they just have a fun little meaning, you know, if you're, maybe someone went away on it, uh, moved away and you just want to send them a little something to tell them that you remember them or thinking of them. This is a great little flower. So there's our little flower shape. Now this this leaf right here, this petal, a little bit big. You kind of look at it, you kind of see. So I'm gonna trim him down just a little bit. Another one of these reasons why we sketch lightly. I'm doing these little sketches, you can fix things. The way to catch those those issues is to kind of sit back a little bit if you're up really close to your to your drawing kind of become you kind of get focused in one area so if you kind of step back just a little bit helps you in a different perspective all right now I'm going to go ahead and, and draw in the stem I'm also going to put this another flower up here in this corner so if I look at the picture I'm not gonna have the stem come right off the center again another reason why reference photos are so awesome because Sometimes our brain just kind of wants to want we want to make up information, but looking at this reference, we can really see how this flower is coming up off the stem, but it's not centered. It's over just a little bit. That gives it a little bit more depth. So again, I'm gonna this now this flower is turned away from me, so we're gonna see more of the back side of it. So I'm gonna draw that shape, and then I'm gonna draw in the in stems. It looks like this one just opened up maybe that day so it hasn't fully pushed those petals back. These little kind of leaf bits. There. So you can't really see the face of the, of the flower here. You just see a little bit of the three or four of the petals and it turns away there. And the stem kind of comes down. Now I'm going to make up a little bit on this one because I want this picture to kind of be its own little person. So I'm kind of looking at these leaves, which are these kind of long, slender leaves. Again, my brain kind of wanted to make up my own leaf, and I was going to put like a little short little leaf. But boom, those reference photos remind me. And that's important if you're wanting to do a representation of a botanical, uh, whether it's a flower or a succulent, to really study what do not just the flowers look like, but the leaves are so distinct. People who really know their flowers can oftentimes just tell a species of flowers just by looking at the leaves. I myself am not that good to be able to tell you that. But let me know in the comments, are you that good? Can you look at a leaf of a plant and tell what it is? I think there might be like two different leaves that I can look at and go, yeah, that's all, that's all that. That's not a tree. I, I know several tree leaves, but like flowers and things like that. I could tell you what those are. All right, and then I want to end this off because so, I want the whole the whole vase of flowers. And since I don't have a sprig with me, I'm just going to have that part I'm going to have to kind of make up a little bit. But using the references in the places that I can is very helpful. So I have two little flowers and two little leaves. If you're not going to paint this and you want to darken it in, you could go back in with a 
with a darker pencil and kind of fix your outlines a little bit, darken that up. If you wanted to add color pencil work, you could do that. But as I said before, I'm going to go ahead and add some color using my watercolor set. I'm gonna back up so you guys can see a little bit of that. People ask me all the time, what brand of watercolors do I use? I actually have a couple different videos where I talk about this. I think I have one that I go through a lot of my watercolors because I don't have just one set. I am kind of a mix match on a lot of different brands. So I would say though, if you're starting out with watercolor to go ahead and get a student grade because it's great to learn and make mistakes with student grade and then get the nice paints when you're ready. It's kind of like, you know, you buy your fixer upper car for the first learning of the, of the lessons and then you save your money up and then you buy your really nice one when you learned how to drive a car really well. <laughs> I'm gonna get some clean water. I love this jar. I got this jar at the Dollar Tree and it looks like honeycomb, so pretty. I wanna do a bee picture, so bad. As I said before, a lot of people ask, how do you color something that is white? How do you add shadow to that? Well, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna color everything else. I'm gonna leave this white. I'm gonna start off. First, I'm gonna get the brush that I like. I keep, keep hitting you guys. Sorry, camera. Nice camera. There, I pet at you. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and take and just wet down the green parts of the leaves. So with watercolor, and I go into a lot more detail of how to use watercolor if you're interested. I have a, a watercolor 101 series that I did actually several years ago. I might have to update it, but watercolors, I love this medium because watercolor goes where the water goes or where gravity will take it. So as long as you control where your water is, you control ultimately where your paint goes. So as I'm putting this paint down, you zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better, you'll see that my paint begins to spread out, but it's only going where I have wet paper. Now, depending on the brand of watercolor paints you use, some brands will spread really fast. Like if I just touch this, it would go, boom. it's just beautiful. It's like magic. And other ones are just like kind of slow and chill and just. Hang on, I'll tell my dog to stop barking. I'm trying to record a video here. Stop. All right, now that was taken care of. I don't even remember what I was talking about. I'm sure it was important. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of this. So on the leaf, I did a technique called wet on wet, which is where I wetted the paper down first and then applied my paint. And this technique is called wet on dry where I'm just applying my paint to dry paper. And I do this technique if I am doing smaller, thin areas and I really wanna control where my paint goes, I'll do that technique. Then I can go back in once it's wet and kind of drop in some colors. And the color I use here is really turquoise. It's almost too turquoise. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in some nice yellows and it's gonna give me some really pretty textures. Hopefully. That's always the fun. You never quite know. I find painting with watercolor is kind of like working with a partner. Um, I did horseback riding a lot when I was a kid and you'd get a horse that you just kind of, you knew and the horse began to know you and you didn't even have to really ask it to do anything. It just automatically knew where you wanted to go. And it was such an awesome partnership. But then there was, every once in a while, you didn't ever get, you know, comfortable because you just never knew when that horse was gonna take off and do something because, you know, it's, it's, it's oh, its own, you know, being. And as well-trained as things are, sometimes it makes its own decisions. And that's kind of like watercolor, I don't know. It's, it does its own little thing. 
I think that's what frustrates people is it's not absolutely controllable. There are times when I watercolor and it looks so good and I'm so sad because I know as it dries, it's gonna change a little bit. The colors are gonna lighten. They're going to mix a little bit more. So I just have to kind of enjoy the moment where it was like that perfectness. <laughs> And I, but I, I love this because, I don't know, if you see this leaf, I'm just adding in different tones into it. So I had my green, but just to give it a little bit of wear and tear, I dropped in a little bit of purple. And it kind of made these little agey spots, or maybe, maybe it looks like water damage. If you drop water onto leaves or the petals, sometimes they just get little spots from that. And it just, I don't know, gives a little bit of something something all right we have one more leaf over here and again i'm using that wet on dry technique just because my line at work is so light and careful to do that oh my goodness i almost missed my painting where i put my hand right on top of my leaf and it was still very wet luckily it only pushed it out a little bit but yeah, watch where you put your hand. I am so heavy handed sometimes with my left hand. I really always have to watch to make sure I don't drag it through things, which is one of the reasons I don't use graphite pencils to draw with, just like regular pencils, pencils, because I'm always dragging my hand across the paper and smudging it. I think that's a common artist thing or writing thing. Writing especially for left-handed people. How many of you guys are left-handed? I always get people asking me if I'm left-handed in my videos, uh, but I never ask you guys if you're left-handed. So let me know, left-handed, right-handed, or ambidextrous. I really wanted to be ambidextrous when I was little. I tried really hard to teach myself to use my right hand as well as my left hand. I can do some things with my right hand. Like I can eat right-handed or left-handed. That was born out of necessity because if you are left-handed and you're sitting at a, you know, like a diner table next to a right-handed person, you know what I'm talking about because everyone's bumping into you. So you kind of just feel like you have to conform and eat with your right hand so you're not the odd man out. I always try to snag the end side so I can sit with my left hand to the outside of the table and not bump in people. So I'm using that purple. Purple is a great color to shade with when you're working with green. Actually, for those of you who watch my videos knows I like to shade a lot with purple. I remember the moment I learned this. I was it was some sort of art lesson I was watching, not on YouTube, because it was before the age of YouTube. I think it was on PBS and it was a painting show and someone was painting a pumpkin. And she said it was time to start shading and, and she said immediately we always just think to paint darker orange for our shading, but she said try to use purple and see what happens. And I watched her paint and it was just absolutely magical seeing this beautiful orange with this purple shading going on there. So I went and got my Crayola watercolors out and I tried it. And I mean, even with the very unpigmented paints that I had, oh, it was one of those like art light bulbs went off in my head. I was like, oh, I got it. I figured it out. She also had done a one where she showed sh uh, shading on with snow and using a very light purple to shade. And I'll talk about that as we get into the doing these flowers. You'll see that I'll I'll use some different colors, not just gray, to shade with. Especially when you're painting, you can really just that's kind of the fun is to use these different colors and kind of exaggerate them a little bit. So I'm gonna let this dry really well. 
and then we're going to come back in and we're going to start painting on the flowers. We're going to tackle the, the whites before we get into those yellows. So I'll be right back. Pro tip, if you don't want to wait for your paints to naturally dry, you can use a little hair dryer and like, everything is nice and dry. So I'm going to go ahead and actually take my gummy eraser and I'm just going to go through here and just very lightly clean up those lines so that I can barely see them. Because we're working with white, I don't want those outlines. So you guys are going to have a hard time seeing this. <laughs> but... I, I can see it fairly well. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one petal at a time, and for, for at least right now, and I'm just going to wet that petal down. And let me zoom in and see how close I can get here. Because this is important. See how you can actually see this, this bubble of water? That's a lot of water right there. I want a lot of water, not that much water, but I want it nice and glossy. Knowing how much water is on your paper is important because it's going to let you know how fast your paint is going to spread. So I want it to be shiny, but I don't want the water to be resting on top of the paper. I want to kind of swish it around a little bit until some of the paper begins to absorb the water. And a good way to do that is just to tilt it. Let's see if I get it tilting where you guys can see it. There we go, right there. So there's a nice little shine. If you can see that shine, then you know you're at a nice wetness. If you put this on, put the water on here, and, and you see that it's just kind of fuzzy. There's also a piece of lint right there. It's just fuzzy, but it's not shiny. Um, that paint's not going to spread very fast. So there's a difference between a uh, kind of a fuzzy water and a shiny water, and then water that's sitting on top of the paper because I want the color to begin to soak into the paper. So getting the paper just a little bit wet is gonna help that the paint to kind of set. All right, I'm backing out of here. People, people often say I have a very messy palette, but I love using my paint. So all these paints are from different paintings that I have done. And I usually keep my swatches unless I absolutely need to clean an area to, to mix some brand new colors because I can use a lot of these colors. That's what I love about watercolor. One of the many things is I can just go in and pull up some of these colors from paintings, you know, months ago and still use them. And things like this, this kind of color, this really soft kind of purpley grayish color. It's like a gray, but a little bit like uh, has purple, maybe a little bit of blue in there. This is a perfect shade to color and shade something that's white with. Now zoom back in. Here we go. So I have my wet little paper here. And then I'm just going to go right into this corner and I'm going to just tap in a little bit of that color. Now if there was a lot of, of water on here, it, was, it would flood my entire petal. And I don't want that. I want this part here to be nice and white. I just want a nice little gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to wipe off my paintbrush. Anytime you see my paintbrush leave the painting screen, I'm going and just wiping wiping off the, the excess moisture. Because I'm going to create this gradient. I'm just going to run this right along this edge of watercolor here. And kind of sweep that around until you get that gradient. If you guys work with Copic markers, this is kind of like what you would do with a colorless blender. You're just kind of blending that shade out. Just pulling it out a little bit. And you just work slowly. It might not be dark enough for you right now, but just slowly build those colors up. So while that dries a little bit, I'm going to go to an, uh, an opposite petal. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And the reason why I'm switching, I'm not doing this one, is because this is wet. So if this and this accidentally touch, my colors might bleed over here. So I'm going to do this one while this one dries. I'm going to go over here. And do the same thing. So I'm going to grab up that same color and I'm just going to tap that right in. Now you see I'm getting a really nice crisp edge on this side and then this over here is getting all fuzzy. That's because there's no water right here so I can get that crisp edge but because this is all wet then I get my fuzzies which is definitely what I want. 
Now, as my paint dries, I know it's going to lighten up. Like already, you can see the difference. This is the same paint that I use, but this one's already lightened up significantly since I placed it. So I know I'll have to probably go back over that and add in some more, um, more color into that. Okay, so this one's wet. This one's pretty much dry, so I'm going to do this one because it's not touching this one here. So I'm going to wet my brush down. Do the same exact thing. And again, remember to keep my individual little petal shapes so they kind of have that little uniqueness to them. See, this is why I really want to make sure that this part is dry because if it was not dry, this green would be just rushing into here and contaminating all of my nice little white areas. Tapping in my color. Just like that. And you'll find the more that you do this, the faster you'll get. So now this one and this one are pretty dry, so I'm going to come over here and do this one. Bringing that clean water all the way up. If you find that your rinsing water is starting to get a little dingy, um, Make sure to clean that out, especially if you're working with something white like this because you don't want any any tints of other shades. Sometimes I'll actually have two jars of water, one for my rinse and one for, for using on the painting. That way I, sometimes I have three because I'll have my coffee cup or tea cup and then I dip into my coffee or tea. That's an artist thing that happens quite frequently. All right, so this one and this one are still pretty wet. I'm not gonna try this one yet, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add just a little bit more color to the first petal, and I'm gonna do this a wet on dry. So you can see this is really dark, and it's okay. It's not gonna stain. I mean, I can I could lift this all the way off of my paper. So I'm gonna get a damp, clean brush, and I'm just gonna sweep around here and every time my brush leaves the area, I'm just wiping off the excess paint. And I might dip in for clean water. You don't want any water drops to hang out on, on this top metal part um, because if they come into contact here, then they'll flood down and you'll get a lot of water and it'll just kind of whoosh out onto your, to your paper. And that's always a fun thing to have happen. There we go, there so. All right, these are, well, not super dry, but I think they're dry enough that I can work with them. So I'm gonna wet this one down. I'm really watching the light. I'm watching my shines to make sure that I'm not connecting those. So I can start laying in this. I have hair in it, so rinse the hair out. If you have a palette that you can store your paints in, really is helpful if you have one that closes. So the one that I have, you see, is on hinge so I can close them. And that really helps keep a little bit of the dust out. I still have some dust issues, but definitely much better than if you have an open palette. If you do, you just put a, some saran wrap over the top of it. And that kind of helps keep that out of there. Now right now they're kind of looking a little bit on the dark side, but remember as they dry, they're going to get much lighter. And we can always kind of come back in here and just kind of scrub our little white areas and pull a little bit of that paint off. You'll never get back to your white, white once you lay down color, but you can definitely significantly lighten things. That's why it's important to protect. So I'd had one spot here it didn't get a lot of water on it and the paint didn't go there, but I'm going to keep that white. I'm not going to mess with that because I want a nice highlight on that petal. That looks like some sunshine just poking itself up there. So the next thing we have to do is, is paint in, in the yellow, but we're going to wait because again, these are still pretty wet. So if I put yellow here, the yellow is going to spread out into these and we won't have white flowers. We'll have yellow flowers. So what I'm going to do is there is um, there's green here, but again, my green is touching this petal. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do the lighter shades of these petals while this dries. And then I'll come back and do the center here and then I'll jump over and do the green there. You kind of have to plan this all out ahead of time so that you know you, you always have something to kind of work on. So because I want these to really look like the back side, I'm going to make them nice and dark right here at this base. And I'm actually going to let that set and let that dark color set in there. And then I'll gradient it out a little bit later. And then I'll put a nice little shadow bit right there. Okay, then I'll clean my brush off and dry it in a little bit. And I'm just going to come in here and just pull that color, go back, rinse my brush, dry it off, back and forth. And then I'll let that dry. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use my hair dryer to dry these off so that I don't have to sit here and wait. You can already see how just pretty those white petals are. And that's just by a little bit of a grayish purple blue color. You're getting that nice technique there. Okay, so there's a couple areas we still need to paint. We have to paint this green here. We have to paint the yellow center. And then there's a little bit of this green leaf that we're gonna see through here and that's really gonna pop out the definitions of our flowers. But again, we want to make sure this is really dry, which it is, it's nice and dry. But if you put your green in it's wet, you'll get a muddy mess. First part I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the center here and there's a lighter yellow and a darker yellow. So because it's easier to darken things than it is to lighten them, I'm gonna add in my light yellows first. So I'm gonna come in here Just tap those in there just like that and then I'll wait for that to dry and then I can go in and put in that darker circle and kind of add a little bit of shading around the edges there while that's drying let's go ahead and do this green part here I'll show you what I'm doing I am just actually coming over to some of these I have this more of a bluish green and then a more yellow green and I'm kind of mixing those two together Get the shade that I like. I very rarely use the color straight from the tube. I love mixing my own. There can be a danger in that where if you're doing a larger piece and you need that exact color, um, it can be hard to mix it and get it exact. So that would be a, a problem that you might run into if you do larger watercolor paintings. I do everything pretty tiny, so I know I only have to mix smaller amounts of paint. But I do have a large watercolor painting project that I'm going to be tackling in the next week or so. A landscape, which I have not done a lot of landscapes before, but I was commissioned to do the sand dunes um, where I live. Actually, I was commissioned over a year ago to do this and have not gotten it done. And I just need to, I need to do it. So they've been very patient waiting for this picture. <laughs> the thing you never want to tell an artist is whenever you have time to do it, there's no rush. At least for me, if you say that, oh, you've just doomed yourself. You're never getting this piece because I have so many things that need to be done right now that it just will always get pushed to the bottom of the list. I, you know, I work and get things ready for a YouTube video and I finally get it edited and posted. And you know what? It's time to start working on the next YouTube video. And so the same thing with painting or doing art commissions and projects. It doesn't seem like there's an end when it's your job. If you do it just as a hobby and for fun, um, it might not be as pressured, but if you want to be a professional artist, that can be kind of a something to think about and that's a normal feeling if you, whether you're a professional artist or you just work for yourself you probably find that it's it's hard to know when work ends because it always seems to be something that you can do All right, 
I am going to tap in just a little bit of this magenta color that I have. Not that it's at all in my reference photo, but again, this is where watercolor just becomes fun. You could just add your own personal take. I think it just makes things interesting. And again, of course, it's purple because I love putting purple into things. <laughs> See, I can get that just super nice crisp line against that petal because the petal's nice and dry. You can just kind of etch that out. It looks like a little bug took a little, took a little munch out of that, that flower there. All right, now that that's drying, I'm going to go and put, since I have my paints already kind of mixed up, I want them, I'm going to just kind of scratch this in right there. I want it relatively dark because it's behind all those petals and it's just going to push those out. Alright, so that center is pretty well drained. I have to be really careful because this is really wet. So I want to make sure that I don't get any water flooding over this way. So I just want to work just in this yellow area here. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to pull in. Now my in my mind, I would just go with like this kind of orangish color here, but as I'm looking, it's actually kind of a greenish. I'm going to pick up some of this. Where's my paintbrush? There it is. I lost the paintbrush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this orange, but then I'm going to go ahead and bring it over to this green part and just kind of mix those colors up a little bit. I want to see what that looks like. I'm going to put that right in there. See what I feel about that. It just, I don't know. It is green in there, yellow and green. But I just feel it needs that orange pop in there. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna take it, make an artistic choice. And just tap in a little bit of that orange. So you can see a little bit of green, a little bit of orange. I'm going to work on just the, the edges here. I've got a darker orange. I'm just going to brush so lightly around the edges of this, just kind of just dusting it. That's why it's really important to have some nice brushes. So this one here is a, it's a number two kind of liner brush. So here is something I was talking about. See how this, I have, have this little water drop right there? That can be dangerous. Try not to let water drops there. You can totally lose control of how much water is on your brush and get crazy. Okay, so that's a little dark, but that is okay. I'm just going to go back with a clean, wet brush and I'm just going to run that along. And then every time, again, my paintbrush leaves the paper, I'm just wiping that excess paint off my brush, maybe cleaning it and just dabbing it a little bit. Okay, I want to define that inner circle just a little bit more, but it's still just a tad bit dry, so I'm going to come in with my blow dryer and dry that out so that it's nice and dry. So I'm going to go back into my palette, and I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of this pink and just kind of swirl it around the side just to see if I can get the color that I like. I want kind of a brownie shadow color like that. A lot of painting is just instinct. You think, I think it should be this. And you just try it out and sometimes it works. Sometimes it definitely does not work and that's okay. So I'm going to tap in some extra shadows and I'm tapping instead of brushing because I want a little bit of a texture in here. It's a little bit redder than my reference photos. I might come back in and cool it down just a little bit. Just 
slow pace. Now I clean my brush off, dried it off, and when I dry it off, it's not like drying, I'm just kind of rub rub, just to kind of get the, the main water off. I want it to be a damp brush because I'm just gonna tap on top of that. It's gonna soften off those little edges there. Just soft, 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 soft. Anything that's too harsh. But I want that nice line in here. So I'm not gonna mess with the inner side of that circle too much. And there we go. Our flowers are just about done. Can maybe add just a little bit more of a shadow. I'm gonna go in with some purple in here just to kind of crisp up my shadow where the petals might leave a little bit of shadow on the leaf. And then there's a little bit of a vein line on this leaf. So I'm going to tap that in with color, let it set for a couple seconds, rinse my brush off, and then just soften that just a little bit. There we go. Now, if you want your leaves or this, this picture to pop out even more, you can put a background color in here and just pop it out. You could add a little bit of shadow. Let me show you the shadow here. Shadow I would use almost the same color that we used in center here, maybe just a little bit more blue on the shadow. And I would just kind of come under wherever I would think there would be a cast shadow. So thinking of where the light is hitting. So if it's kind of hitting down from the top. Just kind of seeing that. You want a little bit darker than the white of your actual flower petals. And the shadow is going to get a lot farther if something's a little bit higher up. I'm not going to get into too much about talking about shadows because that's, that's an entire video on its own. But I would just say look at some different reference photos and see how light interacts with that. But you'll see how just adding a little bit of shadow can really pop things up, especially when you're working with white. Now this shadow here is a little too green swept into my green a little bit. I don't want that to look like a petal, so I want to make sure my shadow's a little bit of a different shade. It kind of matches a bit too much. So I'm going to sweep that color up a little bit. And I'm going to go in with some brown. Just tap in a little bit of brown. That's a dark brown right there. So if your colors are too dark, just clean your brush off, dry it off, and you can kind of go in there and lift up some of that color. My shadow's a little bit harsh, so I'm just gonna go with a clean brush and just kind of run it along the side here. It's just gonna feather that out. So I would say if you're new to watercolor, I would just, and you want to put some background, I would put a background color. A nice um, yellow would be great because it's going to pop out that center color of yellow. I'd probably stick away, stay away from green, um, unless you're just using a nice really dark, dark green because it just might melt into your, your leaves. You could use purple. That would pop out the purple in the flowers and the shading and things like that. Um, but if you have played around with art and you want to be adventurous and you want to try a little bit of shading and shadowing, that can be fun. Um, just to kind of remind you that, you know, anytime you add an element into your drawing is, is an opportunity for it to mess up. Uh, an opportunity to learn, but an opportunity to go, I shouldn't have done that. And that's okay. That's, that's learning. But if you're Making this as a present for someone and you're like, okay, I don't want to mess this up because I don't have time to do another one. And I would just do the solid color behind there or just leave it this way. 
You can outline this with ink, but you're going to immediately take the realistic look off of this. Anything that's outlined is more illustrated. So if you want a more realistic look to your, to your drawings or paintings, avoid an outline. Here we go, our little flowers. So originally I had thought maybe to do a couple of these flowers in, in a video, but as you can see, because I am doing this in real time, this video is already pretty long. So I'm going to go ahead and stop with just this popcorn flower, which if you do it blue um, is a forget me not. Uh, if you enjoyed this type of video, if you'd like to see more botanical flowers, or, um, paintings, maybe succulents, let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see that or give me a suggestion of a flower that you'd like to see painted or a succulent or a plant, whatever. Study on something. If you like this paint with me style where I don't speed things up and I actually am talking to you whilst I am creating. They're a little bit more, more informal. It's more like you're sitting in the studio with me or having a one-on-one -on -one art lesson with me rather than the kind of edited videos. But if you like that, uh, let me know because um, this is kind of fun. It's relaxing. It's kind of like a live stream, only uh, not live. <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in this video. Again, check out Skillshare. Um, use the code in the description box to get uh, to snag yourself some free months of Skillshare. I think that would be pretty awesome. Um, if you're brand new to my channel, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. I do all different types, whether it's realistic things like this or illustrations, cartooning, things like that. All types of videos out there. And until the next art video, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.